हेलो गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग डू हैव एनी डाउट फ्रॉम लास्ट क्लास समायरा नो सर ओके इन लास्ट क्लास वी हैड जस्ट स्टार्टेड सरफेस टेंशन इन व्हिच आई हैड डिफाइंड यू ऑन व्हाट फैक्टर सरफेस टेंशन डिपेंड्स ऑन and what are the different subjective question related to that part so next is angle of contact suppose there is a surface on which if you put water shape of water on that particular surface will be like this but if you place mercury on this particular surface it may acquire this type of shape so as we have defined in last class surface tension acts tangentially to the interface of two separating medium so at this part if you draw a tangent along this direction so it is in between liquid and air so we can call it as surface tension between liquid and air next is if you draw another tangent at this interface between solid and liquid so we can call it as surface tension between solid and air and last at this point if you draw a tangent along this direction so this is differentiating air and this solid so it will be surface tension between solid and air is it clear yes sir so the angle in between these two surface tension from this point to this point let's say theta is called angle of contact similarly if you draw this tangent for this mercury let's say for this point tangent will be along this direction so it will be between liquid and air another tangent at this point separating between solid and liquid solid and liquid and another this point along this direction it will be surface tension between solid and air so the angle between these two tangent from this point to this point theta is called angle of contact so in first part in the case of water theta is acute it will be possible only if adhesive force of water molecule will be greater as compared to cohesive force than it will have smaller surface tension due to which it will have ability to spread over that particular surface easily so it can easily spread over the surface and it will be capable of wetting that surface capable of wetting that surface but in the case of mercury if theta is obtuse it means cohesive force between particle is stronger as compared to adhesive force so larger value of surface tension
So it will have tendency to remain coagulated within themselves. So can't spread easily. Can't spread. So it will be unable to spread that surface. Unable to wet that surface. Is it clear, Asma? Okay, just write it down. Just one minute. Dancer. Asma, you have written? Okay. So next is how to calculate the value of surface tension numerically. Calculation of surface tension. Suppose on surface of liquid, If a disk, or let's say hollow disk, like this, is placed. Which having inner and outer radius as small r from this point to this point, and capital R from this point to this point. So if you have to uplift this particular disc from the surface of liquid, so you must first apply amount of force equivalent to its weight if it will be present in air. But now, since it is present over some liquid surface, so due to the surface and this liquid, or there will be some interaction in between them due to surface tension, or you'll say adhesive force, you must have to apply some extra amount of force above that weight to uplift it. So that extra amount of force applied over this disc to eject it out or uplift it per unit length of its boundary is equals to surface tension. Is it clear? Yes. Sir. So surface tension is denoted by T is equals to amount of force applied on this particular disk per unit length of its interacting boundary. So this force is the extra amount of force, which is other than that particular weight of the body. I'm not considering the weight of this particular object here. Or you may say, take gravity to be neglected in this particular condition. 
So the amount of force applied to uplift this particular object per unit length of its boundary is called or is equal to surface tension. So we can define its unit as force having unit Newton and length of its interacting boundary meter. So its SI unit will be Newton per meter, which is equivalent to force constant or spring constant. So for this object, if you calculate length of interacting boundary or interacting with this particular liquid, so we have one length of its boundary from inner side and one from outer side. So this T in this case will be F divided by two pi small r plus two pi capital R. If you take out common two pi, you will get F divided by two pi R plus capital R. Is it clear? So can you repeat? Since in this part, we have two different surfaces or boundary which is interacting to this particular liquid. One is from inside, from this point to this point, that will be perimeter of this hollow part from inside. So it will be two pi small r. And the other interacting length will be from outside from this point to this point. So it will be two pi capital R. So the total length of its interacting boundary to this liquid will be two pi small r plus two pi capital R. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now, suppose in the case of any ring, this is hollow disk. Let's say this is a ring. So in this part, a small r equals to capital R as width of this particular disk becomes very small so that the small r and capital R get equal. So we can write T is equals to force divide by two pi small r and two pi capital R, both are equal to each other. So it will be four pi r. Is it clear? Yes. Sir. Next. If you cut this particular ring from this part and extend it, so it will form a rod like this. So in case of rod, two pi small r and two pi capital R will be equals to just L. So put these two values related or equals to L for the first formula, you will get F by 2L. Asma, is it clear? Mahuddin, is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Similarly, if disk is complete disk, so in this part, small r equals to zero and capital R will be as it is. So if you put this term in the first formula, you'll get t equals to f by just two pi r only. So you have to use these formula to get surface tension or force or radius or length of rod. Just write it down. I'm giving you some example related to this. Nancy.
Jewel of Britain, Muhyiddin. Yes, sir. Okay. Asma. A ring and square shape having side two centimeter. is placed over liquid having surface tension 0 0.05 newton per meter find force required to uplift it Just use the above concept and try to find. Let me give you some hint. You may consider this particular square frame as combination of four rod. Let's say from this point to this point is a single rod. So this square frame will be consisting of this four equivalent rod. So surface tension will be equals to force divided by two times of length. And since it have four different rod of this shape, so just multiply it by four. Samaira, is it clear? Yes. Okay.
Asma, you got the answer? You are not audible. Let's say you have to calculate force. So you can write force equals to eight times L into surface tension. Eight into length of its side is just two centimeter. So two divided by 100 to convert into meter. The value of surface tension is 0 0.005. <coughs> so, we can write this particular term as 1000 by replacing this particular decimal. So 2 into 5 will be 10. So it will neglect out this 0. So 8 divided by this. So we can write 8 into 10 to the power minus 4 Newton equals to F. Is it clear? Samara, we had to calculate force, not the surface tension. Yes, sir. We had given surface tension in this part. Mohideen, is it clear? Yes, sir, it's clear. Okay. Asma, any doubt? A disk having radius two centimeter is placed over a liquid having surface tension. one by 10 pi newton per meter find force to uplift it just use the above formula for desk and try to find force
Sorry for the interruption. Okay. Good, Samara. Asma, you got the answer? Mohit Deen, in this part, we have to calculate for disk as t equals to force pi just 2 pi r. Just send me your answer, Asma. So f will be equals to 2 pi r times t. 2 pi radius is two centimeter, so you can write it as two divided by 100. Surface tension is one by 10 pi. So this pi and this pi will cancel out. So two into two, four divided by 1000. So we can write it as 0 0.004 Newton. Asma, you got this answer? <clears throat> Mahdeen. Okay. So ne next part of this particular surface tension is energy to form drop or bubble. Suppose at any instant, there is a drop having radius r. Till this point, a radius of this particular drop from this point to this point is r. And you have to convert this particular radius or expand this particular radius by some small amount. Till this part, let's say change in this particular radius from this point to this point is delta r. So we have to calculate amount of work to be applied over this bubble or drop to expand it from this radius to this radius. So let's work done to expand drop from R to R plus delta R as work done equals to force times displacement and force according to concept of surface tension will be surface tension t times length of its interacting boundary times delta r so this delta r and this length of interacting boundary will be nothing but product of length and its breadth so we can write it as change in its area so it will be T times delta A is equals to work done. Samaira, is it clear? Yes, sir. Aisha, any doubt? So can you explain again how do you get that T? We have just converted. Let's say work done equals to force times displacement. So force on this particular wall of bubble or drop to expand it to this much amount of displacement, let's say delta R. So work done equals to force times displacement. We are just applying force due to the interaction of surface tension over that boundary. So force will be equals to surface tension times length of its interacting boundary what I have written above for T equals to force by length of its interacting boundary. 
So we can rearrange this to get force as T times length of its interacting boundary. So length into this width combinedly termed as delta A or change in surface area of this particular drop. This work done is also equals to amount of energy you must have applied to form drop from zero radius to this much amount of radius. Mahuddin, is it clear? Yes, sir. Now, for delta A, we can write it as area final minus area initial. As drop or bubble being spherical in shape, so surface area of sphere is 4 pi r final square minus 4 pi r initial square. So if you take out 4 pi to be common and put it in this part, you will get t into 4 pi times r final square minus r initial square. So this will be your formula to form any drop from initial radius ri to final radius rf. Asma, is it clear? Now, related to this part, there is a concept of surface or interacting surface as drop and bubble being three-dimensional. So we can define surface for these two different body. Concept of interacting surface Suppose you have just bubble. Next. Complete drop. In case of bubble, there is two different surfaces which is directly interacted with air. One would be from inside and the other would be from outside. So the total number of surfaces which is exposed to air, which defines the interacting surface for that particular body. So in case of bubble, it will be total interacting surface will be two, but in case of drop, there is only one interaction or one exposition of the surface to air. So interacting surface will be just one. So the above formula we can write for this bubble is work done equals to two times surface tension into change in area and in terms of drop, it will be just T times delta A. Samara, is it clear? Yes, sir. Muhyiddin, is it clear? So can you explain about the interacting surface one more time? Okay. Let me define you the above part first for the case of surface tension. Suppose for this part, we have defined surface tension equals to force by length of its interacting boundary. So we had two different face surfaces or boundary, which is directly exposed to this liquid. One is from inside and the other is from outside. So we mainly had two different surfaces. Similarly, in the case of rod, I had taken 2L. It means if you are visualizing this particular rod from top side or from this particular side edge, this edge, so you'll say this liquid at this particular point 
may be interacted along this direction as well as along this direction. So there will be two different length of its interacting boundary. That's why head length will be 2L. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Similarly, in the case of drop and bubble, since drop and bubble is three-dimensional body, so we can define its interacting surface or interacting phases. Let's say in the case of bubble, there will be air inside as well as air outside. So inside surfaces and outside surface, both will directly expose to air. So the interacting surface to its surrounding will be two. As surface tension acts tangential to the interface of two separating medium. So we have one separating medium inside and one separating medium outside. So the interacting surface will be two. Is it clear? Yes, sir. But in case of drop, we have completely liquid inside. There is no any other medium other than liquid. So we have only one outside part, that is this portion, which is exposed to air. So only this interface. So tension or surface tension will act only to this point only. So we have only one interacting phase in the case of drop. That's why it will be just one, and this will be T delta A only. Aisha, is it clear? Asma, any doubt? Okay, just write it down. Done, Mahit Dean, you have written? Yes, sir. Okay. find energy to form a drop of radius two centimeter of solution having surface tension 0 0.07 Newton per meter. Here we have just draw. So we have to form this drop of radius 2 centimeter. So take initial radius to be 0, final radius to be 2 centimeter. Surface tension is given 0 0.05. You may take pi to be 22 by 7. Try to solve.
in this question since we have to form drop so energy or work done be equivalent to each other so it will be d times change in surface area so it will be 4 pi r final square minus r initial square just put the value of all these terms and simplify it Aisha, you have solved. Aslan, you got the answer? Okay. Asma, just send me your answer. If you have solved. Surface tension is 0 0.07. 4. You may write pi to be 22 by 7 times initial radius is 0. Final radius is just 2 centimeters. So on squaring, it will be 4 into 10 to the power minus 4. So this 7 and this 7 will cancel out. If you remove this decimal by putting this 100, so now just multiply this whole part, 4 and 4, 16 into 2, 32, 16 to 2, 32, plus 3, 35, into 10 to the power, minus 4 at this point, and 2 at this point, so it will be minus 6. If you move this decimal to this part, so it will be 35, just one minute. So you may write this term as 3.52 into 10 to the power minus four joule.
Samaya, is it clear? Yes, sir. Uh, my mistake, I wrote uh, four, actually. Four or six, okay. I wrote. Okay, okay, okay. You all have written till this part? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. Now, there will be another question related to this. To define combination of drop or to splitting of drop, suppose you have n number of small drops which may combine to form a single large drop. So first question related to this will be, in which side surface area will be more? Towards smaller, smaller drop or toward single large drop? Mahuddin. In which side surface area exposed to air will be larger? Towards a smaller or towards single larger? Asma, any guess? Samara? Single one. Okay. Let me define you. Suppose if you see this particular term, we have this exposed area and this exposed area directly to air. If it is combined like this, but if you split it along this way, so you have this entire term to expose to air this entire term exposed to air, this entire term, and this entire term. It means if body is coagulated or combined, so it will have lesser area exposed to air as compared to smaller particle. So the more the particle being smaller, it will have more surface area exposed to air. So in this part, this small, small drop will have larger surface area exposed to air as compared to this single large drop. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now, the next question will be, towards which side energy will be more? Smaller drop or larger drop? As in above part, I had defined energy is directly proportional to surface area exposed to air. Since we have larger surface area for a smaller drop as compared to a single large drop, it means towards left side, energy will be more as compared to towards right side. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now you must have learned in chemistry, if a reaction goes from higher energy towards lower energy, so which type of reaction is this? On the basis of heat or energy, we define reaction in two different ways. One is endothermic and the other is exothermic. So which reaction would be this? Asma? In this part, we have smaller drops having greater surface area exposed. So it will have greater energy as compared to the single large drop. It will have smaller surface area exposed. So it will have smaller energy. It means this reaction of combining smaller drop 
to form single large drop, you are just going from higher energy to lower energy. So if a reaction proceeds from high energy to lower energy, some energy may evolve during this particular process. So this is also called exothermic reaction. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Mohideen, is it clear? Yes, sir. So the next problem will be, we have to calculate the amount of energy evolved during this particular process. So, amount of energy evolved during this process will be equals to energy final minus energy initial. Let's say this is delta E, so it will be equals to, since this is strong, so it will having only one surface area exposed, so it will be just T times change in surface area. So first we have to calculate surface area change for these two different body. So in this combination, only one term is constant, that is volume. So you can say volume initial should be equals to volume final. Since these are spherical body, so it will have volume four by three pi r cube. And since we have n number of small draw, so just multiply it by n must equals to four by three capital R cube. So four by three pi, four by three pi will cancel out. So you'll get capital R equals to n to the power one by three times small r. Now using this radius, we can write change in surface area for this particular term as T times surface area of smaller drop times n minus surface area of larger drop, four pi r square. Now put the value of capital R to be n to the power one by three times small r. So it will be n times four pi r square minus four pi n to the power two by three times small r square. Now take out common four pi r square. So you are left with n minus n to the power two by three. So this will be total amount of energy evolved during this particular process. Arslan, is it clear? Asmarias, any doubt? Okay, just write it down. Dancer. You all have written?
Mohiddin, you have written? Yes, just one second. Sir. Okay. Then, sir. Asma, you have written? Now, the next question related to this will be, you'll be asked, which of the two shapes is more stable? The smaller drop or the single larger drop? Samaira, any guess? Just remember, for stability, the energy of system should be least or minimum. So in this part, larger drop will have smaller energy. So it will be more stable as compared to a smaller drops. Okay. okay sir. So the next question will be, why all objects tend to acquire spherical shape? So you'll say, Energy is directly proportional to area of that particular object. So in three-dimensional object, for same volume, sphere will acquire minimum surface area. So it will have least energy. So all objects tend to acquire spherical in shape. Is it clear? Yes, sir. For same volume, sphere will have least surface area. So it will have least energy, hence all object will tend to acquire spherical shape. Suppose you'll be asked why the shape of raindrop tend to acquire spherical shape. So this will be reason why the shape of all planet spherical in shape and so on. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Mohiddin, any doubt? No, sir. Okay. Now suppose if 27 small drum combines to form single drop, find amount of energy evolved if surface tension is one by 10 pi Newton per meter. Just use the above formula and try to simplify it.
Just one minute. So can you scroll a bit up? Ms. Mai, what the answer? In this part, we have number of drops as 27. Radius is just two centimeter. Surface tension is one by 10 pi. So we have to calculate amount of energy evolved during this combination. So we add formula E equals to four pi R square times T N minus N to the power two by three. Just put all the values in this formula and simplify it. Samara, you have solved? 
No, sir, no. Okay. Mohit D, your numerical answer is correct. Check out the decimal part. For this calculation, n to the power 2 by 3, we have n is 27 to the power 2 by 3. So just break this 27 in terms of 3 to the power 3 and whole to the power 2 by 3. So power raised to power will get multiplied. So you will get 3 into 2 by 3. <clears throat> so these two terms will cancel out. So you get 3 to the power 2 which will be nothing else but nine. Four pi r square will be four in 10 to the power minus four. Surface tension is one over 10 pi. N is 27 and n to the power two by three is nine. So this pi and this pi will cancel out. 4 into 4, 16. Into 10 to the power minus 4 and 1. So it will be minus 5. 27 minus 9, it will be 18. So 18 into 16 will be 288. Into 10 to the power minus 5. If you move your decimal, towards this, so it will be 2.88 into 10 to the power minus three joule. Mohiruddin, is it clear? Yes, sir. Aisha, any doubt? You all have written? Yes, yes. Arslan? The next concept related to this surface tension is excess pressure. The first question related to this concept will be towards which side of shape of liquid or meniscus of liquid pressure will be more. 
towards concave side or towards convex side. Suppose if we take a small part of any bubble or drop, so it will be like this a small portion of drop or bubble. So if you see along this side direction, so it will be concave shape. And from this, it will be convex. So towards concave or convex, which side pressure will be more? So we have to define this first. Since surface tension acts tangentially to the interface of separating medium. So we can draw surface tension at this point, tangentially acting for this, along this direction, tangentially acting. Draw a vertical line and horizontal. Let's say this is theta. So the surface tension related to this theta will have two different components according to resolution of vector. So one will be along this direction, t cos theta, and the other will be along this direction, t sin theta. Similarly, this will be theta. So this component will be t cos theta, and this component will be t sin theta. Mohideen, is it clear? <clears throat> yes, sir. Samaira, any dial? No, sir. Now, we have one face towards concave side, that is the inner side. So we can write BI will be acting along this direction. And then next is convex side. that is from outside. So at equilibrium, means pressure on either side will be equal to each other. We can write P in each inside equals to P outside plus pressure due to 2t sin theta component. As the surface tension will also generate some amount of pressure towards inward direction or towards downward direction. So we mainly have two different terms in right hand side, which is balancing just a single term on left hand side. Now, if you have to compare between Pi and P0, so which of these two pressure will be stronger? PI or P0? PI. Good. As PI equals to P0 plus something. So PI will be greater with respect to P0. So PI is defined along concave side and P0 is along convex side. So we can say pressure towards concave side is always greater towards convex side. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So PI is greater than P0. Hence, pressure towards concave side is always greater than convex side. Mahiruddin, is it clear? Asparyas? Yes, Asma, is it clear till this part? Okay. Just write it down. 
dansın. Dean, you have written? Yes, sir. Asma, Dan? Now we have to calculate the amount of pressure due to this 2T sine theta component or due to surface tension. That is called excess pressure. So for this part, suppose we have a drop having radius R which is expanding due to pressure difference from inside and outside. Since inside is concave side and outside is convex side, so there would be greater pressure towards inside as compared to outside. So due to this pressure difference, there is some expansion in this particular draw. Let's say this is R, an amount of expansion from this point to this point is delta R, pressure towards inside is Pi and pressure from outside is P0. Consider a drop having radius R is expanding due to pressure difference. So first, work done to expand from R to delta R will be force times displacement. So first write force in terms of surface tension. So it will be T times length of its interacting boundary times delta R. And T times delta R is nothing but delta A. So we can write it as T times of delta A. Now we have to calculate delta A for this part. So delta A equals to four pi outer radius. So it will be R plus delta R square minus four pi inner radius r square. Take out 4 pi as common and expand this relation. So it will be a square b square plus 2 times a into b minus r square. So this r square and this r square will cancel out. Now suppose delta r is 0 0.02. So on squaring it, delta R will become 0 
which is much smaller as compared to 0 0.02, or you can say about 50 times smaller. So we can neglect delta R square in comparison with delta R. So this delta R square being neglected. So on multiplying this all, you'll get eight pi R times delta R as change in this area. So if you put this term in this part, you'll get eight pi R T times delta A as equation first. Samira, is it clear? Yes, sir. Asmariyaz, any doubt in this calculation? <clears throat> okay, now the next method to calculate work done in terms of pressure. So again, work done to expand by delta r will be force times delta r. We can write force in terms of pressure as net pressure into area of cross section times delta r. There is some pressure difference between inside and outside. So difference of these two will be net pressure acting on that particular surface. So it will be Pi minus P naught. And area of sphere is four pi R squared times delta R. So this will be equation two. Mohideen, is it clear? Yes, sir. Now we have same quantity that is work done in both equation one and two. So we can compare them to find pressure difference. So we can write from equation first and equation second, Pi minus P naught times four pi R square delta R equals to eight pi R T times delta R. So delta R and delta R will cancel out. Pi R will cancel out. Four in two times will be equals to A. So we're left with Pi minus P naught equals to 2T by R only. So this is called excess pressure or pressure difference from inside and outside due to drop. Samara, in it out? No, sir. Okay. Just write it down. Done, sir.
Mohideen, you have written. Yes, sir. Okay. Now we have just derived pressure difference due to any drop. So similarly, we can write in case of bubble. which will have two interacting of surface. So PI minus P naught will be equals to 4T by R. Now, let me ask you a conceptual question related to this. Suppose you have a tube. and there is a knob at its midpoint. Now, <clears throat> there is a balloon attached to this point of this much shape. And there is another balloon attached to this point having this much volume. It means the green one is larger as compared to this blue one. Let's say air is filled inside it. So you'll be asked if knob is open, how will size of two balloon will be affected. Samara, any doubt in this question? We have a connecting tube <clears throat> whose both end is joined to any balloon containing air in it, in which one balloon having smaller radius and the other having larger radius, and there is knob at its midpoint. So if you open this particular knob, so air will tend to flow from one side to the other side. So it may to change the shape of this particular two balloon. So you have to define which of these two balloons which start shrinking or expanding? Mahuddin. Any guess? One of the most correct answer regarding this will be, you may imagine, the larger will start shrinking and smaller will start expanding till both acquire same radius. So one of the conclusion will be this. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Or is it the right explanation related to this part according to you? Yes, maybe. Okay. Just see the above formula. We have pressure difference inversely proportional to radius. Okay. So PI minus P naught is inversely proportional to radius. Now, which of the two sides will have greater pressure difference? 
smaller balloon or larger balloon? As pressure difference is inversely proportional to radius, so a smaller balloon will have smaller radius. It means a smaller will, balloon will have larger pressure difference as compared to larger. Can we say? Yes. And next, matter moves from higher pressure to lower pressure. Since in this part, we have larger pressure difference towards a smaller balloon. So liquid or air will start to move from smaller balloon to the larger balloon. So the movement of air will be from this point to this point. Now, due to this movement, volume of smaller will start decreasing. So radius will also start decreasing. Consequently, pressure will also start increasing. So it tends to flow more rapidly and it finally may acquire this shape just. And due to this movement of air, this larger balloon will start expanding, expanding like this. So this explanation would be something different from the obvious answer to get the equal shape on either two sides. Is it clear, Mohiddin? Yes, sir. So you can say as smaller balloon will have larger pressure difference as compared to larger balloon due to which air will tend to move from smaller to larger. Hence, size of smaller becomes much smaller. and size of larger becomes more larger. Asma Riyaz, any doubt related to this concept? Okay, good. Aisha? Is it clear till this part? Okay, you all have written? Samara, any doubt? No, sir. Dancing.
Mohit Dean, you have written. Just one second, sir. Okay. Yeah, done, sir. Okay, so do you have any doubt to anyone of you till this part related to today's topic? No, sir. Okay, so just revise this whole part and try to do some problem related to this. We have just left one portion related to this surface tension that is ACN formula or upliftment of liquid in a capillary tube. Then we'll start hydrodynamics or flow of liquid in next class. Okay. Okay, okay so then, that's all.